there was one Arab boy who uh, he went to become a doctor. So he writes there that when I was studying, I wasn't very interested in my studies. My marks were not that good. I didn't do so good. And uh, anyway, but I passed, I managed, I became a doctor. And it so happened that for my internship, for my housemanship, you know, when you finish doctor, then two years they send you to practice somewhere before you, you can get your degree. So he say where they sent me was very close to my house. It wasn't far from where I stay. It so happened that I got the hospital there. So he said there were many of the foreign students who used to also come and work in this place. So because I was like a local, uh, I used to take them around everywhere, you know, sightseeing, touring, show them around. Because I was a local guy, I had a car, my family was there. And before they used to go home, after the one, two years that they had to do their internship, uh, before they used to go home, I used to call them to my house. I used to give them a nice big tower, a nice meal. And I used to give them some gift, you know, something because now I'll never see them again. They're going to go back England, America, Germany, wherever they're going. I probably I'll never see them again. So I used to give them some gift with which they can remember me. So he said there was this one brother, his name was John. He was from England and he was finishing. He was going back and I knew that he liked all these uh, olden days things, you know, antiques and these old things, coins and so I told my father, listen, uh, we, were, we were discussing it one night and I told my father, give me something from the house. We have so many antique things. I want to take something. I want to give him as a gift. You know, he's going. So he'll always remember me. So my cousin was there and my cousin told me, uh, why, don't you, why don't you give him a book on Islam? So he said, look, I wasn't too dindar. I wasn't pious. So I said, yeah, okay. I'll, you know, I just like brush. I said, yeah, all right, I'll think about it. And I never really took it serious and I left it. Uh, the next day when we were buying the gifts, whatever, uh, I was at a convenience store. So at a garage or any shop, spaza shop. And uh, on the counter there while I'm paying for my goods, uh, I see a small book there for five real, so like five rand. It was an introduction, simple book about Islam, you know, introduction to Islam. So he say, I, I looked at this book and then I thought about what my cousin said. So I said, okay, it's only five rand, five reals. Let me just take it. I'll hide it in this guy's thing so that now, because how I'm going to show him that I want to tell him about Islam. He's a non-Muslim. Just now he, you know, we have a fight and uh, I don't know how he's going to react. So I'll hide it inside his thing. So when he gets to England, uh, then he can open, he'll find it. If he reads it, I, whatever, I don't know. I put it. So he said, I put it. He had his doubt. He flew away, he went to England. Many, many years later, one day I received a letter and the letter is written in English. So he say, I now obviously I'm Arab. Uh, my English wasn't that good. I'm busy reading this letter. And at the end, the letter says that this is from your friend, Dayfullah. So he's saying now, this brother, that in the whole world, I don't know anyone with the name Dayfullah besides myself. His name was Dayfullah. He say, I've never come another across another Muslim whose name is Dayfullah. So I don't know who's this from England saying he's my old friend and his name is Dayfullah. So anyway, say I read some more. Eventually I worked out, okay, the letter is from England. What the letter is saying? The letter is saying that, brother, I want to thank you because you gave me the greatest gift that I could ever get. So he was surprised. Now what this guy, then he carried on, he read. So he read that this letter is actually from your friend John. This is when I studied, this is where I was, this is how we were together. And before I left, you put a book inside my things. When I got to England, I read this book and it made a lot of sense to me. I went to the closest Islamic center I could find. I took my shahada there and me and my family, my wife, my children, we are married. Uh, and all of us have accepted Islam. And I am just writing this letter to thank you that you gave me the greatest gift that anyone could ever have. You introduced me to Islam. If it wasn't for you, I would have been lost in my life. I would have probably been off track. I would have never seen the beauty and the, the light of Islam. And I'm just writing to thank you. And because you are the person, the means of me being introduced to Allah, being introduced to Deen, I have named myself after you. And I want to think, I want to ask you, please make dua for me. I will always make dua for you. 
And I want to thank you because you were the one that gave me hidayat. You were the means for my guidance. So this brother, this Daifullah, this guy put his head down in shame. So he is now thinking to himself that, you know, this brother is thanking me that I gave him hidayat. Actually, he has opened my eyes, he has given me hidayat. And then he's sitting and he's lamenting and thinking to himself that for five rials, for five ren, one man accepted Islam on my hands. And not even, not, I didn't even, with ikhlas, you know, with sincerity, I chant. It was just, by the way, I saw the kitab, I took it, I shoved it inside, I said, whatever happens, happens. On five rials, somebody accepted Islam because of me. And then he thought, how many people I sent from here to their different countries? How many five rials I could have used if it was to save one man from Jahannam? If it was could introduce one more person to Islam, one more person to Allah, how many five rials I would have used to do this if I knew this was going to happen? So sometimes, brothers, we all are not educated, we are all not knowledgeable, we don't have everything. But we know something. Little we know. Everyone knows. I know something. You know something. You know, uh, become the means of someone introducing someone to Deen, someone to Hidayat, someone to Islam. Sometimes because of our own lack of confidence, we feel, no, I don't know. Now, what am I going to tell this brother? What am it's more Allah looks at niyatul mu'min khayrum min amali. The niyat of a believer is better than his actions. Sometimes it is the cry that is in the heart. We do a simple action to you, it might look like nothing. But to that brother, it could be the time when Allah has changed his life for him. Allah is going to make a decision for Hidayat for him. And if we become the means of even one person changing his life, then Ali radiallahu an Nabi sallallahu told him that thus if one person has to get Hidayat on your hands, it is better for you than even having red camels. And red camels was like having a very expensive mode of transport. One person must get hidayat. And that entire person's life, from the time when he accepts Islam till he dies, every good action that that man does, Allah will write the reward in your book of deeds also. So Allah give us understanding, brothers. Allah give us the tawfiq. Let us see, inshallah, wherever we are, whoever we are meeting, whatever we are doing, in our own small broken ways, let us introduce people. We have a whole medan of people around us. People are thirsty for guidance. People are searching everywhere. They are looking. They want to be guided. We have to become the means of introducing these people to Allah and to Nabi Sallallahu Allah give us all understanding of whatever has been said. The ability to practice on it and convey it to us.